Good morning, everyone. It's Marie Walters here again, walking with God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for waking up this morning, my Father, and our family, my Father. We thank you, Father, that this message might be a blessing to others, my Father, to win souls for your kingdom, my Father. As we are soldiers in this army, my God, we ask you to bless our finances. Thank you for giving us health and strength so we can work, my Father, and get a wage. Father, our God, that's not all. We have to also work for you, Father, because you are the one who gives us the strength to work. Father God, we thank you for our able bodiment, our hands work, our finger work, our mind work, our, our feet work. Father God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for resurrection morning. Thank you, thank you for forgiving us. And you don't remember our sins, my Father. You throw, cast it far away, far, far away. Father, let us continue to glorify you because we could not do it without you. You blow your breath of life into us and the man became a living soul. Father, we must remember this at all times, every day. And we praise your holy name. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Well, I'm going to start by saying I was born in Jamaica, as I've told you before in previous videos. I was born in 1958. I was born to a single mother and a single father. They weren't married. Anyway, one day my grandmother, from my father's side, was going shopping because it only far. It's just like from church or to house then. And she saw me in the yard eating dirt and all pooed up. She went to shopping and came back, took me out of the, 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 my, mother's, my mother's mother's house yard and took me to her house, never returned me. She cleaned me up. I was very sickly because I was always eating dirt because I was hungry. My father and my grandmother looked after me. My mother came to England. When she came to England, she and my dad had planned or they discussed whatever. That she, as soon as she get raised enough money, she would send for him. Anyway, she came, she sent the money for him. He refused to come because his father wanted him to go to America. She was very upset about it. My grandmother told me this. She was very upset about this. And so she decided to send for me. She didn't want to send for me. She sent for me as a second choice because my dad wouldn't come. And that was a way of getting back at him and, and his mother. So I came here on a distasteful way to get revenge. When I came here, there was two ladies and one gentleman at the airport. and says, which one of us do you think is your mum? I didn't know who my mother was. I didn't know. This is the first time I'm seeing my mother. Because she left me, I think, when I was three years old. She left England. Jamaica, sorry. She left Jamaica. So I didn't know who she was. I came. When I came, oh my God. What a life I came to. Fighting in the house. Fighting in the house. Oh, lots of fighting in the house. About a, a little while after coming here, my mother got pregnant. Unfortunately, she lost that baby. A little while after, she had another baby. Anyway, I was there with the baby, helping the baby, my brother, helping him and looking after him. A couple of years later, she had another child. I was there. Being the oldest child for my parent, I helped a lot. I was always in the kitchen. They put me in the kitchen. I did all the cooking. But before that, even before coming here, I remember I used to play with a little girl at the back of my grandmother's yard when I was living with my grandmother. Because we used to go to the back of the yard and poo at the back, right at the back. And I used to play with this little girl at the back of the yard. I didn't know who she was. My cousin used to play with her as well. I later said to my dad, Dad, that little girl in the back of the yard, make her come to the house. He said, no, she can't come to the house. He goes, you know who she is? I said, no, dad. He goes, that's your sister. I said, my sister. So why can't she come and live with me? I didn't understand what was going on. But it seems that my mother had another child, which I never knew about. And she lived a adjoining garden to, to my, where my grandmother lived. I came here not knowing my sister, just knowing my sister. I didn't know her at Jamaica. When I came here, I realized she was my sister. When I came here, after a couple of months, my mother was pregnant. But unfortunately, she lost it. Then she got pregnant again. 
and I had a brother. I was really happy there was more than me alone in the house. And after a couple of, about a year or so, of two, she had another baby. I was happy. I was looking after my brother and sister. I was running the home. I was cooking. I was cleaning. I was, I was like a housekeeper. I did everything. I was always cooking it. I was always in the kitchen. As that time went on, my other sister, the sister now that I met, used to play with at the back garden. She came. She came and she was the one that cleaned up the house. I was the one who cooked. And this went on. My life was terrible. Terrible, terrible. I ran away from home. I ran away and after a period of time, my mother came back and said to me, oh, she wants me home. She wants me home. And I thought, why does she want me home? She doesn't treat me well at home. So why does she want me home? Anyway, she said, you can go out. You can have a boyfriend. You can do what you want. I thought this was really hard to believe because she wasn't that sort of parent. So something's going on. Anyway, I soon found out what was going on. I came home. My, my stepsister was down for that, that time. I think it was holiday, school holidays or something. And we were sleeping and somebody creeped in the room, but I kept quiet. I didn't know who this person was because I hadn't been home for about over a year. So I don't know. Anyway, he creeped over to the, my sister's bed and said, let me touch you. Let me touch you. I'll give you some more money. Let me touch you. Being a Jamaican, I cuss out one big bad word. I said, move your what's it, what's it. He jumps up over my bed, ran in the room. Because by this time, everybody had woken up and asked my voice. Grabbed some things and he bolted out the house. I never saw him back at the house again. But it looked like she was being abused in the house. And nobody knew, but they had a feeling. But they needed proof. Me coming out of the care, Barrett's Green home. I was able to verify that. But little did I know I was pregnant at the time. I was pregnant at the time. When she found out, my parent found out I was pregnant, I'd have to put on a coat if everybody came to the house. And it went on like this for a while till she got fed up of me. She decided to tell the social service to take me. They took me to a place in Kent, mother and baby home in Kent. I stayed there by myself. I never had no family, no friends. I only had visitors when the baby was born. But even before the baby was born, I was I was taken to Arley Street to have an abortion before the baby was born because I was only 15. I was 15 when I was pregnant, just 15 and a bit. When I was taken to Arley Street, my parent told the gentleman, the police, the doctor, <laughs> police, the doctor that she wanted me to have an abortion. When they checked my body and everything with the baby, they said that I too far gone. The baby was fully formed. So if I had abortion... I might not be able to have her any more children. She said that she wants the abortion done. Anyway, they sent her out the room and the doctor talked to me and he said to me, do you want this baby? I said, yes, because there's not a lot of love in my house and there's always this pure problem in the house and abuse in the house. So he said to me, okay. He called her back in and said, I'm sorry, Miss, Miss, I can't perform because she might not be able to have any more children and whatever. And I've asked her and she wants her baby. So that's how the baby came about. So I had my baby two weeks before I was 16. I was born the 15th. My birthday is the 15th of May. She's the 24th of April. Roughly about two weeks difference. So she was a birthday present to me. God worked out everything in a way. Now this child hates me like poison. And she per the person who wanted me to have the abortion, she loves with all her heart. With all her heart. But you know, you have to learn to forgive. You have to forgive because if you can't forgive, you eat up yourself. You eat up your inside. Even sometimes I've said, I wish I did really follow what my parent did say. Because of all this problem, I wouldn't have. But you know, it was supposed to be. And what's supposed to be is going to be. I will live to see a glorious day when all my children will serve God in the right way. With their heart cleansed, washed in the blood. The hearts washed in the blood. And know that honor belongs to God. All honor and glory belongs to God. Because if it wasn't for God, or me knowing God, or being brought up in a godly home in Jamaica, this wouldn't have come by. I would have said no, and listen to everything they say, and do what they say. So Father God, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for the opportunity to come together, to tell her and tell everyone who has hurt me. I forgive you. You know why? Forgiving you, I forgive myself. I'm free out of bondage. 
And I just want to thank God. People, if you're being hurt, don't look at the hurt. It was training. You was in a training for a time like this. A time like this, you were in training. You were being prepared for times like this. So give honor to God. Follow Jesus the best way you can. Just follow him. Take up your cross and walk. Because he didn't say it was going to be easy. He never said it was going to be easy. But wow, it is wonderful to serve God. It is wonderful. It's a privilege and an honor to serve God. That God can look down from heaven and say, This is my child who I approve. I'm happy with her. So Father, thank you for this message. Let it go through now in Jesus' name. Amen.